Hey, what's up, YouTube? In this problem, we're going to prove uh, that this limit as x approaches 2 is equal to 0. So this is pretty easy to do with the squeeze theorem. Um, but let's, let's go ahead and give a delta epsilon proof just for a little bit more rigor. I mean, it's the same thing, uh, very similar proof. Um, so let's go through it. So recall, recall first what it means, uh, what a limit is, right? So if you take the limit uh, as x approaches c of f of x and you get l, this means and let's use, you know, let's use the, the formal notation. This means that for every epsilon greater than zero, so for all epsilon greater than zero, we can find some, some delta greater than zero. So there exists uh, a delta greater than zero such that, so for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists some number delta greater than zero such that for every uh, real number x, where the distance between x and c is small. So if you have, if you have x minus c in absolute value less than delta, then the distance between f of x and l is small. So we have, we have the distance between f of x and l also being small. So that's, that's what this means, right? That's the formal, precise definition of, of a limit. Um, so let's go ahead and do it to prove that this limit uh, is 0. So first, we need to figure out our delta. So we need to do this, this scratch work. So we'll have an epsilon greater than zero. Uh, that's given, right? We'll have that in our proof. We just gotta find delta, right? We just need, we just need delta. We need, we need delta. So our C here is gonna be two, right? And our L here in this problem is zero. And this beautiful thing here, this is, uh, this is our f of x, right? This is our f of x. This whole thing here, right? It just circles our f of x. So we'll have this condition to work with. So we can write that down. We're gonna need that. So we'll have absolute value of x minus c. So c, c was, yeah, c is 2. So x minus 2, that's less than delta. And that has to imply that this condition is true. So f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So our f of x is this ridiculous uh, looking creature up here, x minus 2 to the 7th uh, times cosine of 2 over x minus 2 minus l, so minus 0. We want that to be less than epsilon, right? That's, that's the goal. We want this to be less than epsilon. Um, so we can drop the 0, so this is equal to the absolute value of x minus 2 to the 7th times the absolute value. You can do that. You can break it up into two absolute values, right? And we know something about the absolute value of cosine. It's less than or equal to 1, right? Cosine is bounded by 1, right? So that means that in absolute value, it's less than 1. So this is less than or equal to the absolute value of x minus 2. You can bring this outside, the 7, no problems there, times 1. And we want this to be less than epsilon, right? So we want this to be less than epsilon. So now what we do is we think, oh, look, the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than delta, right? It's less than delta. So we have this, right? So what we can do, this is less than delta to the 7th, right? And we want that to be less than epsilon. Right? So again, uh, the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than delta. So here we have it being raised to the 7th power. So it's certain, you can just raise both sides to the 7th power, right? No problems there. Um, so we have that. Then um, you could solve this, I guess, if you take the 7th root, the 7th root of epsilon. So if we do delta equals 7th root of epsilon, things will work. Because when you raise this to the 7th power, what's going to happen is you're going to get an equals here, right? Right? If you raise this to the seventh power, you're going to get the seventh root of epsilon to the seventh power. Boom, you just get epsilon. So this, this should work. This is going to be our beautiful delta in the proof. So let's go ahead and do the proof. So I'm going to just keep this in mind. I'm going to erase the scratch work, and we're going to write the formal, the formal proof. So for the formal proof, we start by saying, so proof, we start by saying let epsilon be greater than zero. And then we choose our delta. So you have to start with this. Then you have to show delta exists. Well, epsilon exists, so certainly the seventh root of x, epsilon also exists. So choose delta to be the seventh root of epsilon. And now as a formality, we write this down as part of the proof. So for every x and r with, so then, for all real numbers x, so for all x and r with, the distance between x and 2 less than delta, so the distance between x and 2 less than delta, and now we're going to look at the difference between f of x and l, right? What a nice, what a nice problem. Um, we have, we have, so we'll look at f of x minus l. So absolute value x minus 2 to the 7th 
cosine of 2 over x minus 2 minus 0. And we know this is equal to, uh, break it up, x minus 2 to the 7th, right, to the 7th, times absolute value, and then cosine of 2 over x minus 2. Right, and then this is less than or equal to 1. We talked about that before. So this is less than or equal to, oh, and this is less, you know what? This is less than, I'll do it in steps. This is less than or equal to x minus 2 to the 7th times 1. We don't really need the 1 there. I'm going I'm to erase the 1 because, you know, anything times 1 is 1, so gone. And then we know that this is less than delta, right? So this is less than delta to the 7th. But delta is equal to the, uh, to the 7th root of epsilon. So this is equal to the seventh root of epsilon to the seventh, and there it is. It goes away, right? They cancel, and so you get epsilon, and that completes the proof. That's it. Thanks for watching.